We didn't start off thinking to ourselves, okay, in, in four years, um, let's submit to the Best Illusion of the Year contest uh, and see if we win. It was it very much was a byproduct of research that we've been doing on something we call pop out, basically where you have a, a field of white sheep and, a, and, and one black sheep and the black sheep pops out at you. It's, it's that kind of a concept and uh, trying to figure out what the, the basis of this phenomenon of pop out is and along the way we discovered something called false pop out where um, actually one of the white sheep can pop out at you instead of the black sheep and in trying to take this phenomenon apart down to its bare bones, uh, we came across this, uh, this stimulus where we're basically try we were trying to force people to see something as different that wasn't actually different. Most people call the illusions that we're looking at here optical, but most of the illusions that we study in the lab aren't really optical at all. They're visual or neural. So to give an example of an optical illusion, if you take a pencil that's straight and put it in a glass of water, it appears to be bent. That's not our fault. That uh, illusion originates in the light and the fact that when light passes from water, from air into water, it gets refracted or bent. Uh, but when we take this same straight pencil and we put it in motion like so, and we see it go rubbery, that's not in the optics, that's in us. That has to do with our slow visual system and slow neurons that aren't responding as rapidly as they ought to because at every exact instant, at every nanosecond, the image of this pencil on the eye is perfectly straight, okay? That's an actual non-rubbery pencil. So, we're interested in then looking at uh, illusions and what they can tell us about how the eye and brain normally function. Uh, and to appreciate the importance of that, uh, you have to understand that the key to perception is discrimination, telling that two things are different. So when we say people have color perception, it means we can tell two different colors apart or wavelengths apart. When we say we have depth perception, it means we can tell two different distances apart. What we study in our lab is really rapid discrimination, things where we don't have to hunt sequentially like in Where's Waldo, but things that simply pop out at you. Now, in order to figure out what's going on with our illusion, you don't need fancy lab equipment, you don't need computers. All you need to do is walk into Starbucks. You know, we all know, that they serve three sizes of coffee at Starbucks, but there are only two sizes of the sleeves that keep you from burning your fingers on the cup, the small and the medium. So, what do you do if you buy the large size coffee at Starbucks? Well, you simply move this one down to here, and you now have the large size. Now this is an illusion called the Jastro illusion. Jastro is famous because he received the first PhD in psychology ever at Johns Hopkins University in the late 1800s. Uh, and he created a number of illusions and this is one of them. Uh, our illusion is sort of based on this concept. We call this concept the anti-metamer. And we got that name by drawing off of a, a related concept, the metamer. Metamers are two stimuli that are physically different but look the same. So the illusion is basically this picture and you can get it um, without anything moving in the picture but there's three roads and the idea is that most people perceive this road to be different when in actuality this road is the one that's different. So when we take things and we move it around, um, people will be pointing at this one to say that that one's different and then we can just move this guy over here and all of a sudden this one looks like it's different and people see these ones as being more the same. Some people will actually say that all of these look different to them. Um, and then you can just move it back and we get back to the original display. And doing it this way is great um, for all the non-believers, the, uh, the ones that want to say that we're trying to fake them out. Um, here it is in real time. Well, all the attention that uh, Kim and I have received from this illusion is certainly gratifying. Uh, it wasn't surprising to us because we were told by the organizers of the contest that this was going to happen. I don't think either one of us was sure that it actually was, but it now looks like one month after these videos were put uh, up on the web, we'll have something around a half a million views just on the one, uh, one website alone. So that's gratifying. I think the bigger picture is that it's nice to see the world interested in how the brain operates. It's nice to see the world interested in how we discover how the brain operates. Uh, there's so much out there 
about our world that's interesting and people follow all the various sciences, physics, chemistry, and biology. Uh, now is sort of the dawn of the area of interest in neuroscience, that we're actually getting to the point where we, first of all, understand what the problem is. <laughs> Throughout most of human history, we, we've not really understood what the problem of understanding the mind and brain actually is. But now we're getting tools uh, for, for determining how that works. And uh, the more uh, the attention of the public is focused on that, the better the chances for funding for research of that sort. And uh, then the more likely we'll actually come to understand what is indisputably the most complex organ in the known universe, namely the human brain.